Okay. I've just been dropped off in the Stillwater Wapiti block. Second period. And this is just above Twin Falls. I've got 10 days solo in this area. There's a lot of stags in here. The roaring and bugling is going well. How is this day? This is my 10th trip into Fiordland. And in those 10 times, I have not seen many days like this. We've got to make full advantage of this day. I was tempted to get dropped off in the tops here, but this main valley, this big headwater holds these two big, big basins. We flew over them when we came in and they just sort of scream, big bull, big bull in here. Oh yeah, not sure if you notice. Yeah, it's pretty cold. <laughs> Come on, let's go set up this tent. How good is this spot? Check it out. Nice and flat and dry with no debris from the river. This, this is us. Let's get it set up. And it's just so simple. I just love it. Ha, and that's it. It's as simple as that. Then it's as simple as just pegging it out, guide ropes out. Inside here there is some Velcro. So that Velcro just aligns those tent poles where they need to sit to give it that extra strength. This is the beautiful thing about a freestanding tent. If you've set it up, you've jumped in there and there's that log or a rock that's just in the wrong spot. The beauty of a freestanding tent like this Rab tent is you can simply just unpeg it, put it somewhere else, set it up, easy. I'm so excited about getting set up, checking out the layout of the land. So what I have got is another new bit of kit, but I'm gonna show you this later because I'm just too keen to head out and show you where we're at. But this new bit of kit is a brand new Rab sleeping mattress, which is hot out of the oven. I'll show you that mattress later. I've set it up already. Let's go for a walk. Check out this crazy country. Check that out. <laughs> it's so insane. These valleys have just been carved out by glaciers. And that's what makes them so, so steep. I'm just working my way up this river here. And there's some beautiful hanging basins. Can't believe I can glass them from here. So I'm just sort of working my way in the shadows and in the bush edge and just creeping my way up, taking in this amazing surroundings while sort of mapping it in my head. So just familiarizing myself with where I am, hopefully be able to locate some stag soon. And then also up here, there's just the most amazing little hanging basin in there. Just captures the sun, be full of feed. That would be amazing. Looks pretty bluffy. I can see that shining rock smiling at me, saying, if you make your way up here, you're worthy. <laughs> but that's for later, that's later on the trip. What's really calling me is up around the corner is the head basin of this incredible river system. And the wind's right, everything's right. Day one, period two, whoppity ballot, and the sun's out. Wow. Let's get the binos out and just glass these faces. See if we can pick something up. Stag is standing right in the middle of the slip. That was fantastic. I've got a really good layout of the land of where everything's placed. Now when I lay down in that tent, I've got a feeling of familiarity with the area. It just puts me at ease, it really does. I know what's around the corner. I know how to get onto the tops. I know my exit points my strategies. I've made it back to the tent. Coffee's brewed, sun's gone down, just about time to jump in that sleeping bag. What an incredible day. I can't believe we got to make it all the way up to that head basin, but I just think it was just too hot today, which is why the reds went roaring or the wapiti went bugling. So I'm gonna finish this cuppa, then I'm gonna send a message on my Garmin inReach, and I'll see you in the morning. Cheers. Oh, 
Well, it's definitely coming down a bit heavier, but it's just not too bad still. It can either go either way. It's either going to buck it down, stay the same, and clear up. Even though it's raining, I'm camped up in one spot. It's still magical. It's certainly coming down now. I've made the right call just to sit back and wait and make sure there wasn't more behind the weather that I saw this morning. And uh, yeah, there definitely was. <laughs> She's coming down. So while it's raining, what a perfect time to go back in time, talk about my new bit of kit and my camp setup. It's brand new, hot out of the oven. There's only two of these in New Zealand at the moment of filming this. And I'm lucky enough to be one of those two to get my hands on this little puppy. It is a brand new Rab sleeping mat. Instead of foil to reflect the heat in there, it's actually insulated. So this is an insulated sleeping pad and it's got raised tubes on the sides. So to stop you from rolling off and it just snugs you in there. I'll set this up and show you and it is the next level sleeping mattress you need to keep your eye out for. So roll it out. It comes with an airbag just to blow it up. Keep that moisture out of the insulation that's inside it. Simply place the connector into the valve. And then it's as simple as capturing that air. And in she goes. These bits here, these raised ends, is exactly what I'm talking about. So, when you're on it, oh, that's so nice. You just have these heightened tubes either side, and it just, just makes you snug. You're not gonna roll off it. Plus, this top surface has actually got a little bit of a grip to it, which I love. The amount of times I put a pillow on my sleeping mattress, wake up in the middle of the night and that pillow is just shot off. <laughs> I've shot off, the sleeping bag shot off. Anything just with a, just a little bit of a grip, that's gonna stop and hopefully hold my pillow where it needs to be. As you can see, there is just so much room in here for one. It's actually a two man shelter, but squeeze for two, perfect for one. So all I'm going to do now is get up my silk tarp. The rain should hit here and then should filter it towards the back end as opposed to in the front end here. It's nice to be here and not on those tops getting absolutely hammered and destroyed by the storm. But this is a great sign. As soon as it clears, the stags, everything's just going to be like kids in a candy store. They want to get out, they want to get dry, they want to get warm, they want to get this action kicked off. So, as soon as the rain clears, in a day or two, hopefully we get a break, and then we should start seeing some action. This is all part of it. This is all part of it. You just got to take it in, smile, and just enjoy the ride. The day is looking good. It was supposed to just keep pouring down like it did yesterday and last night, but there's a break. There's a break in the weather. So I'm packed up and we're heading for the head basin. The river's definitely come down a lot since last night. It's crossable again. It definitely wasn't last night. <laughs> if you haven't seen ridiculously steep country, well, now you have. We just come back to that slope where we were a couple of days ago. And there's a stag, it's a bit bigger. <gasps> a bit more creamy, a bit more wop like. Oh, look at him running up to that waterfall. <laughs> wow. This is where we're going. Up into that head basin. Poke our nose in and make an assessment as we're there. Yes, 
Yes, what a day, what a day. I can't wait, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here, to check that out. I've been dreaming about what's in there since I got this block. Let's go. Just about to break into the open tops. Check this out. I find a camp spot up in here somewhere. <laughs> yes. Wow. And check out this head basin. Let alone up in these faces. Wow. So glad I pushed, made the effort to get here. So well worth it. We came from way down there. Come check out my epic, epic tent site. It's unbelievable. And the stags are going nuts. There's one going crazy over here. And a couple more going crazy in this head basin. I knew, I knew this was the spot. Check this out. Not a bad view. So now about these stags. So I've seen one stag down here. He was a nice 10. He looked quite big body. Don't know if you heard that. Another stag roaring. He was a big body, big neck on him and it was quite low. Big, nice, nice shape but not quite the length that I'm looking for. He was given a bit of a bugle and then something behind him was roaring and he looked behind and then he actually shot off into the bush so there's something bigger than that tent in there for sure. Now this one over here, it's hard to tell, real hard to tell his length because he's, he is a couple of k away but then saying that there's another couple just down in here and then another one just down in here which is actually pretty close. <laughs> I knew this was the spot. That one that's way in the distance is with four real nice creamy cows. So if he's not the master, he's probably the satellite, which is a good chance of it. Just because his head, even though I couldn't quite tell with the length, I could see points on top, but he was holding it quite high and that's normally a sign that it's quite young. So I've got a feeling there's a big boy over there. Hopefully you heard that. This is a spot, I knew it. It's amazing to find this one flat spot, even though there's huge open tops, but just the mission to find one flat spot to put this tent. It's amazing. That's how steep this country is. That's because we're in Fjordland and we're in the head basin of the still water. And the stags are going off. Oh, this is pretty excited. Pretty excited to be fair. Pretty excited. I'll see you in the morning and I guarantee you stags are going to be going nuts. No doubt. <laughs> see you in the morning. Good morning. Those stags were going nuts all night. <laughs> it, was, it was just unbelievable to a point where I'm thinking, these poor buggers are going to be exhausted. They're not going to be out this morning. But there is one bugling. Don't know if you heard that. Fusion, when I'm talking about roaring and bugling, if you're new to hunting, is in this area, there's two types of deer, a red deer and a whoppity bull. So a red stag roars and a whoppity bull bugles. There'll always be a touch of red in that whoppity blood in Fiordland, but hey, that's just the Kiwi whop, and I love it. So this bull down here, he's in the open, I just can't see him. Oh, day four on the mattress. Wow, 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 wow. I did notice by just elevating where my shoulders are, I put my pack there. That just makes my body mould perfectly into that mattress. I found him, I found him on the tops. He's with those four cows. He is, I'd like to say, three or four K away. <laughs> so 
<laughs> the lens can only do so much, but at least we should see them. I have located the other stag. I haven't seen him yet, but he's just working the bush edge of that slip that we came across on the way up here. I think he's just waiting for last light until he really shows himself. Looks like the cloud is slowly working in too, so if it's complete white out tomorrow, he's a good option, because we can still get down there safely. We can still work the bush. Doesn't really matter if it's complete white out tomorrow, but I'll take whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me, within reason. Unfortunately, the cloud and the rain's come in, but that's okay. There's still a couple of hours to go before it gets dark, so it might clear, I doubt it. It's amazing, as soon as that cloud came in and a bit of rain, the stags just boom, they just shut up shop, they just kept quiet. It's quite amazing. I have set up a tarp over this tent just to give it that little bit of extra protection being a single skin. I'll show you how I've set it up, it's pretty cool. You don't even notice that you've got it. Oh, saying that they've been quiet, one kicks off again. So here's the slip, come check this out. Right down there. I'm sure you can probably hear them go crazy down there. Well, the rain did stop, and the cloud lifted enough for me to roar in the valley. There was a new stag, he was just angry as, just marching the bush line from scrub to bush line. He wanted to pop out, but I just ran out of light, and I can actually hear him not more than a couple of hundred meters away. He's searching for me. <laughs> this tarp setup is just epic. I made myself a cuppa. Who knows what adventure we're going to see tomorrow, but I can guarantee you it's going to be an adventure. I'll see you in the morning. Morning. It has been an amazing morning already. I saw a massive stag right on the silhouette of that top ridge, but he's definitely working the tops. That stag that was trying to find me last night, he's still down there. Same spur, we're roaring at each other. He's just dropped down into that head basin, so I know where he's at. There's also another one that's appeared. I can't quite find him yet, but he's just, he's closer. He's just on these tops. I'm guessing he's just sort of in here somewhere. I'm just trying to locate him. He's bugling real good. I know he's in the open because I can hear that sound, it's just the clarity, he's definitely there, I've just got to locate him. i oh, also got my mate here. He's come to check on me, make sure I'm okay, slept well, slept really good, how about you? You sleep good? Yeah? That's Kia talk for. Sleep well. He's just not shy at all. Oh, that sounded good. That sounded real good. He's the one I'm looking for. What do you reckon? You know a bit more about the area? Did I call it? Did I call it right? He's not giving up any secrets. <laughs> Come back onto the other side, that main head basin. Why? Well, this is why I was here. This is why I'm here right now. This is what's been playing on my mind, this upper head basin. Plus, as I was doing the hybrid roar to that other bull over there, the stag that was looking for me last night has come back up and he's just, he's looking for me, he's looking for me, he's trying to find me. 
So he's come quite high up. He's still in the bush at the moment, right amongst sort of the bush line and some scrub. Hopefully you heard that. So I'm gonna do the same hybrid roar and let's see if we can entice him, hopefully, up into these open bits here. If he comes out there, we can assess him, we can see him. He's well within shooting distance from there. So he's just in here at the moment. He's only 93 yards away. <laughs> he can definitely see me. Actually a real young 10. He's broken off one of the tips of his tines, probably in fighting. He's a scrapper, that's why he's come up here. He's looking for a barroom brawl. <laughs> Looking for me last night, couldn't find me, found me this morning. I can't believe I'm here right now experiencing this with you. Unbelievable. I'm sure he can hear me talking. He doesn't care. He's too much in the moment. He's getting it done, son.